Greetings in Christ. I'm Pastor John Fritz of Hope Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Aurora, Illinois, and I'd like to welcome you to our worship service for this, the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, in the year of our Lord, 2024. The theme for our service and sermon today is taken from the Epistle of James, Bring Back a Sinner. Our opening song for today is, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me as we speak together Psalm 91 from the English Standard Version. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your right side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Please join me as we praise God singing, Create in Me. Okay. 
James chapter 5 verses 1 through 20. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes, and your no, no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. This is the word of the Lord, which calls us to repentance. Please lift up your voices with me in a prayer of confession. Gracious Lord, Almighty God, your word tells us that no one is righteous before you, and we cannot earn our way to heaven and avoid an eternity of justly deserved punishment for our sins. Thankfully, you call all people to repent and trust in the name of Jesus for full, gracious, and free salvation. We confess before you all our sins and iniquities with which we have ever offended you. 
Especially today, we confess our failures to reach out to the lost or even try to bring back those wandering from the truth. Forgive us for Christ's sake. Amen. On the basis of this, your confession, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ lived a perfect life and died in hellish torment to reach and bring back sinners like you and like me. He shed his blood and his shed blood has covered a multitude of our sins and it empowers us to share the truth of God's condemnation of all sin as well as the good news of forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Amen. We respond to God's absolution of our sins by singing God of grace and God of glory. Holy Gospel for today is Mark chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us. For truly, I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ will by no means lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than with two feet to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out. 
It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into hell, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please join me as we praise God, singing, Jesus sinners will receive. brothers and sisters in Christ, bring back a sinner. The encouragement to do so is found a couple times in today's epistle from James. Bring back a sinner. My wife and I are of an age where sometimes we're getting up and we're going off to do something in the house and on the way it somewhat slips our mind what our general purpose was heading there in the first place. Sometimes she might be heading to the kitchen or to the fridge and I might ask her for a refreshing beverage. Could you bring back a refreshing beverage for me? And though we both grew up in Wisconsin, neither of us actually like beer. So the request for a refreshing beverage could be soda or pop or coke or orange juice, apple juice, some kind of juice, cold water, sometimes coffee, tea. But when you ask for somebody to bring something back for you, you generally expect that if they've said, sure, I can do that, that's exactly what they'll do. On the other hand, if you're going out fishing and it's not absolutely certain that you're going to be successful, you might say, bring back a few trout for supper tonight. And if you're casting isn't working or the fish just aren't biting, you may have every intention of bringing back a few trout. 
But even with your best intentions, you may have to stop at the grocery store on the way back to fulfill that request. You and I need to read the epistle of James. As believers in Christ, if we ever get up on our high horse and think we've absolutely made it, James has words for us. James calls us to look at how the Christian life is to be lived in joyful service to our God and Father with thanks and praise for the mercy and grace that he pours out through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But as I read James, even just this chapter 5 that we have for today, I see so many areas where I have fallen short. And if I'm preaching properly to you, and if God's Word, through the power of the Holy Spirit, at work in this law, in James chapter 5, is getting through it all, you rich weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. And you might look in the mirror and say, I'm not a billionaire. Why, I'm not even a multimillionaire. I'm not rich. But you've got a nicer vehicle than Jesus and his disciples ever rode around on. You've got climate control at your fingertips. You've got computing power that is many orders of magnitude greater than that which sent men to the moon back in the late 60s. You and I have riches beyond King Herod's dreams. We actually are rich. And in fact, even the poorest person in our church is richer than 75% of the people on the planet. But we're not just supposed to mourn because we're wealthy. What is it that we do with our wealth? Sometimes we use the economic leverage that we have to get really good deals and rip people off. They may be working in mines around the world. They may be working in sweatshops around the world. And we don't see the exact connections. But there are times when you, if you've been as parsimonious or read that cheap as I have been, there are probably times when you've made purchases, hopefully, prayerfully, that haven't been on the back of enslaved brothers and sisters in Christ over in China, or child laborers, or slave laborers around the world. But in trying to be good stewards of financial things, there probably have been times when we've given in to the, if it's too good to be true, pricing that maybe people were definitely disadvantaged in order to provide those prices. You've lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. How many ads have you seen that haven't encouraged you to indulge yourself? You're worth it. You've earned it. You deserve it. You've fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter, and some of us have fattened our bodies as well. You've condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets. Also look at Job. How soon do we start weeping and wailing and grumbling and complaining when things aren't going exactly our way, even in very trivial matters. Like, have you ever grumbled that your sports team providing entertainment for you, having multi-millionaires play for multi-billionaires, and they are somehow failing you, and you see that as cause for concern or perhaps another beverage? Is anyone suffering? 
let him pray. If anyone is cheerful, let him sing praise. What we are supposed to do, walking around with the Holy Spirit of our Lord in our hearts, pray in times of trouble and praise in times of cheer and blessing. Confess your sins to one another. Have ever heard that in the Lord's Prayer? Father, forgive us as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Christ tells us to go and disciple all the world, literally, as you are going, disciple all nations, baptizing and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And here's something that we have as a command from our Lord that we should not only be concerned for those folks over there that we've never met, that have never bothered us, that need to hear the gospel in their own language, in foreign mission fields, which we should support and we should pray for, and we should work to make sure that God's Word is available in their language as well. But what about when you and I have the opportunity to stand up, stand up for Jesus, to stand on the truth of God's Word as people are veering away from the very truth of God, and we say nothing? Are we as zealous and eager for the return to the truth, the personification of the truth, the personification of the way, and the personification of the life, as we are for some far-off mission field? Do we pray zealously and eagerly and regularly for the members of our church to stay faithful and true to our Lord Jesus Christ, for our children and grandchildren, and if God's blessed you with great-grandchildren, for them too, for our extended families, for our friends, for our communities, as we see the community tumbling further and further into the abyss, further and further away from the truth of God's Word. Do we even care? Sometimes I'll find myself very focused on things that won't matter at all on Judgment Day. And sometimes I have to look at these words of James and haul myself up and scratch my head and wonder, what was I thinking, focusing so much of my time and my energy and perhaps even my money on things that aren't really going to matter? You see, James in encouraging us to live faithfully to our Lord shows us how the Christ life within us should be working itself out in love for God and love for neighbor and good works. And at first blush, we really should blush because God's word is convicting. And yet, as we read this about bring him back Bring back a sinner from his wandering, save his soul from death, and cover a multitude of sins. We see how our Lord and Savior was crucified by a sinful generation. How our Good Shepherd looked at you and me through time and across the miles and saw us straying 
our wayward, sinful souls. And he was willing to go to the cross, the shepherd crucified for the straying sheep. He loved you that much. He sought you out when you were straying from the truth. He brought you to himself in the waters of baptism or through the powerful word of the gospel, the power of God to salvation for all who believe. And he cared that much for you. He sent his spirit into your heart to live through you. And he wants to move you and me to recognize his great grace active in our lives when he was seeking us as we were straying. And he wants us to also look to those straying from the truth, to try to do it winsomely, to try to point people to the absolute truth of God's word in a clear and convincing way, and yet to recognize that the burden of conversion is not on your shoulders or mine. We should pray. We should beseech the Lord. We should plead to the Lord for the eternal salvation of all those for whom we care. We should witness, not nag, witness after prayer, try to find opportunities in a one-on-one -on -one, say situation let's not call people up short in public unless we absolutely have no other choice but do what you can with the tools that you have the Word of God the catechism portals of prayer other devotions, trusted resources on the internet, not goofy stuff that's going to be heretical in all sorts of different ways. But trust that the Lord, who looked at your sinful condition, your lostness, your straying, and who was not content that you should stray away, but that the Good Shepherd would go after you, that he would bring back a sinner, and know that he loves your spouse, your relatives, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your co-workers, your classmates, even more than you do. Ask him for power and strength and wisdom and insight from his Holy Spirit, and dare to open your mouth, filled with, what do we have it filled with? If any among you is suffering, let him pray. Offer to pray for people who are hurting. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. And between those two extremes, there are so many other interactions that we can have with brothers and sisters in Christ and those who are in Christ but straying away, and those who have never known or trusted in Him. Use the opportunities that God has given you to share the bad news of God's law, that none of us measures up to this section from James or the rest of the sections in God's Word that show us how much we need a Savior, but also share the absolute great news that Christ came and began his ministry by saying, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Forgiveness and grace and mercy is available to you and to me in Christ and in Christ alone. And that, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, gives you and me the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guarding and keeping our hearts and minds in and through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me as we confess the faith that saves in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh, Almighty God, you reveal who you really are, your holiness, character, attributes, the reality of only two eternal destinations, and all we need to know to be saved. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that trusting your plan of salvation for Christ's sake, we too may be faithful witnesses to your word, calling our world to leave behind the sinful imaginations of fallen mankind's wicked heart. Avoid the hellfire we deserve and enter the gates of heaven, which Christ opened for us and for all who believe in him. Give us the desire to bring back sinners who wander and the assurance that only your spirit can effect real change. Be with President Biden and all our elected representatives and leaders the world over whom you have established by your own authority and give them your wisdom and the courage to rule righteously. Lead political and cultural leaders who would twist your word to justify their sin to genuine repentance and saving faith. Help those around the world suffering from natural and man-made disasters and bless those we name in our hearts who stand in need of your physical healing with the best outcome that you know for them eternally. In your holy name we pray, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Our closing song today is Lift High the Cross.
Say